Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you. Families evacuated as landslide damages several houses in India's Jammu and Kashmir. IMF chief asks Pakistan to tax the rich, subsidize the poor. And female foreign ministers at Munich conference condemn restrictions on Afghan women. And now for all the details, over a dozen houses were damaged in Ramban district and Sonmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory after massive landslides hit both the areas on Sunday, rendering over 15 families homeless. Ramban district administration officials said on Monday that the affected families had been shifted to a safer location and provided with immediate relief. Vehicular traffic had been stopped through the main road near the affected Daksar Dal village after it also developed cracks. The Indian Army on Monday assisted the civil administration in Sonmarg in providing relief operations. India is one of the most disaster-prone countries in the world and many of its over 1.2 billion people live in areas vulnerable to natural hazards such as floods, landslides, cyclones, droughts and earthquakes. In news from Pakistan, days after the terror attack on Karachi police office, Pakistani investigators suspect there could be an insider help facilitating the attackers. At least five police officials were killed and dozen others were injured in the attack by banned terror outfit, the Pakistani Taliban, last Friday. Days after the banned terror outfit, Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan TTP conducted terror attack on the police office in Pakistan's Karachi city, killing at least five police officials. The investigation team of Sindh police and other central agencies have emerged to be clueless about the mastermind and facilitators of the Friday's attack. According to an official of the investigation team, the investigators were looking into an aspect that the terrorists or their facilitators got help from inside local media reported. The official said that the CCTV footage showed that two unidentified men wearing helmets saw the three terrorists outside the attack site and they left the place on a motorcycle before the attack began, adding that the third terrorist was still unidentified. The police have so far filed FIR against three terrorists, their facilitators and TTP spokesperson under murder and terrorism sections and have transferred the investigation to the Counter-Terrorism Department. Pakistan saw as many as 376 terror attacks in the year 2022 itself. A majority of them were claimed by banned terror outfits such as TTP, Daesh and the Balochistan Liberation Army. The TTP has also renewed attack on the security establishment after the terror outfit withdrew from a ceasefire late last year with the South Asian nation. And moving on, IMF Chief Kristalina Georgievia has advised Pakistan to stop giving tax evasion subsidies to the rich and rather subsidize the poor if it wants to function as a country. The remarks came as Pakistan is locked in negotiations with a global lender for the release of critical bailout funds with roughly enough reserves to meet only three weeks of imports. The managing director of IMF, the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, has advised Pakistan to stop giving tax evasion subsidies to the rich and rather subsidize the poor if it wants to function as a country. In an interview to a German broadcaster on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference, Georgieva, in response to a question over the delay in critical IMF bailout to Pakistan, said, What we are asking for are steps Pakistan needs to take not to get into a dangerous place where its debt needs to be restructured. Those who can, those who are making good money in the public or private sector need to contribute to the economy. 
Secondly, to have a fairer distribution of the pressures by moving subsidies only towards the people who really need it. With roughly enough reserves to meet only three weeks of imports, Pakistan is looking to increase revenue despite multi-decade high inflation of 27%, which has left people across the country overburdened. جو اہم ضروریات ہے آٹا ہو گئے دالیں ہو گئے یہ غریب کی ضرورت سے خرید سے جو ہے نا باہر ہو گئے ہیں غریب آٹے کے لیے ترس رہے ہیں حکمرانوں کو چاہیے کہ اپنے اشیاء کم کرے اور عوام کو آٹے کے وغیرہ گیس کے اس طرح بلی وغیرہ کے ریلیف دے دیں دی پاکستان گورنمنٹ لاسٹ ویک لیڈ ا سپلیمنٹری فائنانس بل ان دی پارلیمنٹ پروپوزنگ ٹو ریز دی گڈس اینڈ سروسز ٹیکس ٹو 18% ٹو ہیلپ ریز 170 بلین روپیز ڈیورنگ دی فسکل ایئر اینڈنگ ان جولائی The price of petrol was also hiked by nearly 22 rupees to 272 rupees per liter, which has raised worries of a further rise in inflation. Ten female foreign ministers who attended the 59th Munich Security Conference in Germany condemned the imposition of restrictions on women and girls in Afghanistan. In a joint statement, they said that they criticized the Taliban's push to exclude women from all public life as women in the war-torn country are kept from strolling in parks, are not seen on TV screens anymore, are deprived of their rights to attend schools and universities, and are now also kept from working in humanitarian assistance. The statement added the of restrictions on women, particularly when it comes to their essential role in the delivery of humanitarian assistance, will restore the basis to deliver much-needed help to Afghans. The three-day Munich Security Conference witnessed participation by many world leaders. There was, however, no representative of Afghanistan's Taliban administration, which has not been recognized by any foreign government so far. Well, in news from Nepal, Chairman of CPN, Unified Socialist Madhav Kumar Nepal, has claimed that the current ruling coalition can unravel at any time because of the Rashtriya Swatantrata Party. He said that the ruling alliance comprises of political forces which are poles apart in political ideologies, including a champion of republicanism and the other a pro-monarch party. Nepal's former Prime Minister and CPN Unified Socialist Chairman Madhav Kumar Nepal has claimed that the current ruling coalition can unravel at any time because of Rashtriya Swatantra Party, RSP. Speaking at an event in Kirtipur on Sunday, Nepal said the government is in crisis after the RSP announced its decision to withdraw from the ruling coalition following its demand of reinstating party chief Rabi Lamichane as Home Minister was rejected by Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dahel. While the RSP quit the government, the party has announced it will continue support to Dahel's government. However, if RSP withdraws the given support, the Prime Minister will have to seek a vote of confidence within a month. Madhav Kumar Nepal said the ruling coalition comprises of political forces which are poles apart in political ideologies, including a champion of republicanism and the other a pro-monarch party. He said the major alliance partner, UML led by K.P. Sharma Oli, is trying to maintain political monopoly by taking all the positions itself, including the post of president as the country will soon hold presidential election. And more news from Nepal. India on Monday handed over the first tranche of the 200 kidney dialysis machines to the Nepal government as part of its efforts to develop the health infrastructure in the Himalayan nation. During a ceremony in Kathmandu, Indian Ambassador Naveen Srivastav handed over the machines to Padamgiri, Nepal's Minister for Health and Population. Srivastav said India and Nepal are working together in various fields and health is one such important sector. The Nepal government has allocated over 2 billion Nepali rupees for the treatment of eight serious ailments. Around 6,000 patients having renal failure have been taking free dialysis services throughout the country. Giri said India keeps up with its neighbor's first policy, which is beneficial for his country. And thousands of Hindu devotees across India took a holy dip in sacred rivers and offered prayers in temples on the auspicious occasion of Somvati Amavasya or a no-moon Monday. As part of the rituals on the occasion, married women observed fast and worshipped the people tree for the long life of their husbands. Take a look. Tens of thousands of Hindu devotees thronged India's temple towns to take a holy dip in sacred rivers on the auspicious occasion of Somvati Amavasya or a no moon Monday. River banks teemed with devotees as they waited for their turns to plunge in River Ganga in Haridwar, Ujjain and Prayagraj to wash away lifetime of sins and pray for the happiness of their departed ancestors. 
और हिंदू संस्कृति में भी विशेष सौमुति अमोश का एक महत्व होता है उसी महत्व के अनुसार हम लोग भी स्नान करने आए हम सब लोगों ने स्नान किया और प्रशासन और की भी व्यवस्थाएं बहुत अच्छी हैं। अकॉर्डिंग टू दिंदू एपिक ऑफ महाभारत भीष्म दिसन ऑफ रिवर गंगा नरेटेड द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ सोमवती अमावस्या टू युधिष्ठिर द एल्डेस्ट ऑफ द फाइव पांडव ब्रदर्स भीष्म सेड दैट हु एवर टेक्स अ बाथ इन द सेक्रेड रिवर्स ऑन दिस डे वुड बी प्रॉस्पेरस डिसीज फ्री एंड फ्री फ्रॉम ग्रीफ एंड सोरो यहाँ उज्जैन अवंतिका नगरी में सोम तीर्थ नाम का महाकुंड है जिसमें स्नान करने से शरीर के दारिद्र रोग दोष भय व्याधि पीड़ा निवारण होते हैं जो भी जातक शरीर से कष्टप्रद है जिनके ऊपर किसी प्रकार की कोई ऊपरी बाधाएं हैं या किसी प्रकार का अन्य कोई कुंडली में जनित तो दोष है तो आज के दिन शिप्रा तट पर स्नान करें महाकाल की यात्रा करें दर्शन करें तो उसके समस्त दुखों का कष्टों का निवारण होता मैरिड वेमेन ऑल्सो वर्शिप दिक्रेड पीपल ट्री and take rounds around it 108 times on this occasion they also perform different rituals and observe somvati amavasya vrat or fasting for a happy married life and for the long life of their husbands well that's all we have for you from sadeshia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on sadeshianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sadeshianewsline and follow us on twitter at sadeshianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we'll see you same time tomorrow good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India